Now, when you read the book of uh, Job chapter 40, when you read from verse 6, you can read from verse 6, then God answered the Lord. Then answered the Lord unto Job. So, from verse 6, God was talking to Job. Then in verse 14, God replied him. Verse number 14. Then will I also confess unto thee that thy own right hand can save thee. He said, Job, me, God, now will confess to you. That right hand he used in giving, that right hand, it will save you now. After God has said this, Job's life changed. He said, me, God, I will confess to you that your hand, that your hand will save you now. I ask you a question. Can something go leave your hand to another person? Can something go leave your hand to the altar? Ask yourself. God talking to Job. After I have listened to Job, God said to him, me, me, I will confess to you that your own right hand will save you. And blessing started coming. Breakthrough started coming. Open doors started coming. Like two Sundays ago when I was preaching, here yeah, I told our people, God's own people, in Nigeria, a young man asked his father, why everybody in this town, village is poor? Nobody is making it. Even though they go to London, anywhere in the world, they say return empty-handed. And his father said to him, my son, the witches in town never allow anyone to progress in life. He said, Papa, I will stop the witches. And when he said, I will stop the witches, your mind will go to fasting and prayers. He said, Papa, I will stop the witches. So he left to the town where he's walking. And bought a land in the village. And started building a church building. Finish it. Within six years, he finished the church and everything. Instruments and chairs. Everything he can do in the church, he loaded the church everything. Then he came and fasted for three days and said, God, I have done nobody, I have done what nobody have done in this town for you by building your church and decorating the church. So what you have not done for anybody in this town, do it to me. Maybe when he told say, I will stop the witch, he told he will go and fast and pray for 100 days and 100 nights. He said, I build your church building, buy the seats, bought instruments, anything he can think about within six years, I've done it for you in this town. So the blessing I've not given to anybody in this town. Now you give it to me. Well, what I've done to you, nobody ever done it for you in this town. By building you a house. Now today is a multimillionaire. And he's one of the books shot in life. His education ended in GS3. But today, he's a multimillionaire. All the ten churches in their village have built all houses for them and pastoral quarter for them. He says, for me, I'm waiting. What are you waiting for? I always say it everywhere I go. God lost the earth. He never come fighting the devil, give it to me. He gave his only son to take the earth from the devil. God, who created you, never take it by fighting. Boom, boom, ooh, ooh, ooh. If you don't give me, you will die. I will kill you. Which is, must die. God never behaved that way. But he gave his only son to take the earth back from the devil. So if God, who created you, can recover by giving, then what are you waiting for? Sometimes we pray as if God is a slave. Holy Ghost, move now, move now. Because he's your servant. Some of you don't. God doesn't just send angels on assignment. Hmm? The angels, they speak on God's behalf. They talk on his behalf. God to leave his throne. I say, Jesus, Jesus, move now, move now, move now. Begin to kill them. Then God begin to, he begin to kill on your behalf. Anyone holding what belongs to me must die. You too, you are holding what belongs to somebody. But there are something you have, God wants you to give to somebody. So somebody too is praying somewhere. Anyone holding what belongs to me, if you don't give to me, must die. So who will die first? Even with the little you have, God wants you to give to somebody. And the one somebody to have, 
God wants him to give to you. Now, two of you are praying that somebody should die. Who will die first? You see, the problem between man and God is giving. And that is why man became a sinner. Maybe next time I will preach it. Man never became a sinner because he went to Juju or any place. Man became a sinner because he ate what belonged to God. He became a sinner. And you are eating what belongs to God. And you think God will take you to heaven. Man ate what belonged to God. Man became a sinner. Finish. And God is saying, this garden of Eden, you cannot stay anymore. In this garden of Eden, because he ate what belonged to me, I will no more accommodate you in this place of abundance. In this place where you cannot labor. In this place where things are free. You can't stay here anymore. Because what belongs to me, you are taking one apple of it and eat. And you too, you are eating what belongs to God. He said, God have mercy. If God didn't forgive Adam and Eve because of the ate what belonged to him, who is God to, to forgive you? He said, God is a merciful God to some extent. If God is the merciful God to the end, he won't take Moses and kill him on the mountain. He won't take Moses and kill him on the mountain. A man who saw his, saw his face face to face. He killed him on the mountain. Even you have not even seen God clot. But a man who saw him face to face, he took him to the mountain and killed him. And you yourself, you have not even seen God clot. No, man ate what belonged to God. That's why man became a sinner. And you too, you are eating what belongs to God. You see, do it. It will pain your life. But when God bless you back, the pain will disappear. He says, as for me, hmm, oh my God, I'm waiting. What are you waiting for? The Bible says, now is acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Those who don't know how to give, do always people who pray the dangerous prayer that somebody must die. 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 Oh, so who will die? What have you done for God to kill on your behalf? God is looking for people that when himself needs something, they will give to God. That's why God put something in your hand. That when he needs something for somebody, when he needs something in his house, he can take from you and give to the person. He can take from you and give to his church. That's why he gives to you. So everything you have, not only for yourself, is for you and God. But when he says, it's me alone, it's me alone, it's me alone, it's me alone, he can't give you again. I always tell people, and people laugh, God cannot cheat. The only thing God gives to you is your soul and your spirit. Anything apart from that, sand gave it to you. Everybody is the product of sand. And that's why when you die, God take what he gave to you, spirit and soul. But your body he gave back to the sand. Because sand gave up himself to produce a man. Today, sand has swallowed billions of human beings on this earth. God can't cheat. He can't take your body like this to heaven. Son gave you this handsome, beautiful body. So when you die, son take. Because whatsoever a man sow, he will reap. So that's why this body cannot go to heaven. Son take back. I give you the body now. I give only one man. But now I'm getting them in billions. And the only thing God gives to you is the soul and the spirit. He take. The rest, son, take. He says, for me, huh, when God bless me. So the one you have, you know God blessing. The little you have. I always say this story that a Nigerian man, a young man, he thought that he is dead, but never knew he was in a dream. According to him, the angel calling them some people entering the heaven. He reached his turn. The angel said he can't enter. He said, for what? He said, the angel said, you can't enter. He said, for what? He said to the angel, God, who I serve, where is him? The angel said, he asked me to make the roll call here. He said, call him, come here. You are not the one I serve. He is the one I serve. Let him come here. I want to talk to him. And the angel said, no, you can't enter. He said, you are not the one I serve. I came to church, clap and dance. Not because of myself, but because of him. 
I pay my tithe because of him, not because of myself. He asks me to pay 10%, but I always give my 15% tithe. I sold my only car and give the money to the pastor to buy a church land. Now you are telling me that I should enter the place. Call him, come here. I want to talk to him. And according to me, he didn't, he thought he's dead. God whispered to the angel, let him in. When he woke up, he said, this is not just ordinary dream. This dream just to encourage me to give all the time. This is a dream so that I will continue in my sacrifice. When you continue in your normal giving, you will continue getting your normal blessing. But when you go beyond normal giving and start sacrifice, sacrifice is something that brings solution. Sacrifice is something that solves problem. Sacrifice is something that carry weight in your heart. When you are giving it, you still love it. But the thing is paining you, but you are still giving it. Giving it not because you have 20 suits in your wardrobe. You take one, brother, take. Sister, take. It's the normal giving. It brings you a normal blessing. He said, this life doesn't just bless because you are jumping, clapping up and down. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. And if you are not willing and obedient, how can you eat the fruit of the land? You see, you are yourself alone. You are the one who is causing trouble in your own life. The devil is not the one who is hindering your blessing. You are the one. When you do the right thing, God will make a way. The enemy will leave the way. When you do what you're supposed to do, God of heaven, then will make something to happen. You know, sometimes you say I will prosper, but your character shows you cannot prosper. You say I'm a millionaire, but your character shows when you have something that you cannot even be Tanzania. That is a Nigerian way of English. You say you never become Tanzania, you want to be a millionaire. He said, I will prosper, I will prosper. But your character shows that you cannot prosper. When you have something, then you're angry with God. Why is pastor talking like that? When you don't have, he said, I wish if I have it. I wish if I have it. I wish if I have it. Now you have a pastor is talking. Hey, why is he talking like that? Now you know that I've got something in life. Why is he talking like that? And some people behave as if God is blind. Some people behave as if God is deaf and dumb. Why? You are eating. You say, if God bless me. So the one you are having, you know, God bless him. The little, you see, even your tent said, somebody needs it for solution. Whatever you wish men to do to you, do unto them first. You see, sacrifice, it can open any door. I will tell you something and you will laugh. First time I went to U.S. some years ago, I know nobody. I just went to attend conference. After the conference, nobody knew me. America, if no pastor introduced you, you, ne you will never preach. You will sleep for 24 hours. Nobody, nobody. So sometimes I call Papa, Papa, I say, okay, pray, God will make a way. So I have some money in my bag. I brought the money from Ghana here. I took the money from Ghana here to U.S., so two months, no program, nothing for me in U.S. Then I took that money. I sent it through Western Union money to Papa. I said, Papa, I use it to celebrate uh, Christmas. God bless you. He said, thank you. I sent somebody. Somebody will withdraw it and send to him. Three days time, he called me. He said, I just spoke to one of my friends. He will call you to come and preach. <laughs> Some people don't understand. As I sent the money to him, I said, do what I have. Oh, Papa, I use it to buy something for Christmas. And we don't again. Ten days he called me. He said, I just spoke to my friend right now. He will call you. And ten minutes time the man called me. And before I know, I already preached in 15 places. Some people don't understand the life. Some people don't understand the life. And they take the life for granted. They start waiting and praying. Somebody must die. Somebody must give it to me. What have you given for somebody to give to you? 
Ask yourself from January to this time. What have you given to God? What have you done? He said this son will be a millionaire. He's not a millionaire. To be a millionaire is not a gift. Poverty is a choice. Prosperity is a choice. Poverty is not a gift. Prosperity is not a gift. Both of them is a choice. Stand on your feet. Any nation who depends on the word of God prosper a lot. Because the word of God himself is a prophecy, it will give a revelation to go high. And when a man of God is prophesying to people who know the word of God, the prophecy works faster. Just not to take much of the time because the man of God is around. Yesterday, he took some envelope in the morning from me. If you have not returned it, you can drop it right now. Some people brought their own yesterday morning. Some people brought their own yesterday night. If you are here, you took envelope from me yesterday, you have not returned it, you can come and bring it right now. Hurry up, hurry up. Papa Idahusa said when he was alive, prophecy walked to the people who know the word of God. When a man of God prophesying to people who know the Bible, who know the word of God, it will work fast. And when a man of God prophesying to the people of sacrifice, the prophecy will work faster. But when a man of God prophesying to the stingy, greedy people, it's like you're pouring water on a stone. When the sun shines, it dry up. You know, when he graduates, from your normal giving to sacrifice, things will start happening in your life. Don't be a baby Christian. Don't sign a check because you see that something is going to happen. Just sign a check in advance. Hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. Some brought their own yesterday and some brought their own yesterday morning. Hurry up, hurry up. The man of God will make you to take envelope, so I won't commit to take envelope today. But I want you to drop something on the altar. I can't preach like they talk about sacrifices. Then you are looking at me. I told my friend I like preaching in Nigeria. If I'm talking to Nigeria like this, by this time the altar is full up. The altar is full up. We see somebody writing a check. But Ghana want him to mention his name, her name, before we sign a check or even 50 Ghana city. Eh? You go to Nigeria. Is a, a preacher only coming down from a car. Somebody writing a check to put in his pocket. He never know what the man will preach. He don't know what the man will talk. He just see the man coming out from the car. He says, please take this my little check. And when you open it, he will know that it's a good check. I was preaching in America in Pastor Edu, Edu Jinfe Church in New York. And a Ghanaian gave me a check. I was happy. He said, don't be happy. Check the check first. <laughs> Have a good church, Reverend Edu, Apostle Edu Jinfe. Say, check the check. When I open the check, it's $20 check. He said, I told you. He said, give me the check. Take your $20. No, you are laughing, but you have to help yourself. You are here. I want you to do something on the altar. It can be 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, Five, hold up, come and drop it. Hurry up. And I bet there is somebody here that is a prayer God never answered from January to this time. Before 31st December, he will answer that prayers. I said there is somebody here today that is a prayer I have been praying from January to date. But between now and 31st, it is possible God will give it to you. Hurry up, everybody. Anything you can drop, hurry up. Anything, anything. Don't look at somebody. Don't look at somebody. Now your own increase is in your hand. Hurry up. Something when you are coming to church, you select some money, put it in your pocket. Is after all, it's my money. After all, it's my money. Shout and tell your neighbor no bad news. Uh, you know me like yesterday. Shout it. No bad news. Shout it again. No bad news. And shout it. I cannot be poor again. I'm still talking because I want you to bring your money to the altar. Shout it. No bad news. 
Shout it that cannot be poor again. Some people are still looking at us like that. Why? Shout it, no bad news. And shout it, I cannot be poor again. No bad news. I cannot be poor again. Okay, the prophet will wake you up. I have preached, I have teach. The Lord will bless you. You will not be stranded. You will not be frustrated. You will not be put to shame. I told you, what your enemies plan, God to have a plan. What your enemy is saying, God too is saying something. What your enemies are doing, God too is doing something. If your enemies are fighting you, God is protecting you. If your enemy want to destroy you, God wants to save you. Anything your enemies are trying to do, God will do the opposite. I say, whatsoever your enemies are trying to do, Jehovah will do the opposite. Whatsoever human beings are trying to do against you, Jehovah will do the opposite. Whatsoever your fellow human beings want to do to you against your life, Jehovah will do the opposite. Somebody shout, I receive it. Somebody shout, I receive it. Somebody shout, I receive it. And somebody shout, no bad news. Somebody shout, I cannot be poor again. Somebody shout, no bad news. Somebody shout, I cannot be poor again. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you take your seat? And you just want to hold the hand of somebody and pray in tongues for about two minutes. Begin to demand the overflow of the anointing this morning, the prophetic anointing in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Charge up yourself. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Ma pala bo ba ba boya. 